She sells seashells on the seashore. The seashells. She sells the seashells, I'm sure. Hello, my name is Jim. Welcome to my booktube channel about books and reading and stuff. This video is my January wrap up. I finished five books in January. I can't show you them physically because they were all digital. I read The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. I'll link to the review here. Uh, here. I read Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Remarkable Creatures by Tracy Chevalier. And the other two books were really short stories. The Virginia Woolf. A Mark on the Wall and Blood Child by Octavia E. Butler, which is my first venture into Afrofuturism. I'll link to that video here. I'm hoping in 2021 to read authors from a wider range of countries. The first month, January, has just been reading authors from America, apart from Virginia Woolf, who's British. But the five authors I read, they're all women. This may be the first time for me to have read all women in a month and no, not finished any books by any male authors. When I was a teenager, when I was reading science fiction, most of the time I was just reading male authors. I would rarely read female authors. Now, I think it's more 50-50, but January, all the writers or the authors have been female. I started this video with a tongue twister. She sells seashells on the seashore. I'm sure the shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. I started this with this because of two of the books I read, where the Crawdad Sings and Remarkable Creatures. Remarkable Creatures is the story of Mary Anning and her friend Elizabeth Philpott, who lived at the beginning of the 19th century in Lyme Regis in the south of England on the Jurassic coast. And they found many fossils, but because they were women, the men in the Geological Society and others would get credit for the fossils that the women found because the Geological Society didn't admit women and women weren't considered to be worthy of being scientists at the time. But Mary Anning, despite a poor background and a lack of education, was able to find some of the very first dinosaur fossils on the beaches around Lyme Regis. She found an ichthyosaurus, she found a pleosaurus. So in Where the Crawdad Sings, Kaya Clark is progressively abandoned by her family members because her father is an abusive alcoholic. First, her mother leaves. Kaya is always expecting her to come back, but she never does. Then her brother leaves and she's left with the alcoholic father, who eventually himself doesn't come back. So Kaya has to fend for herself in the marshlands in North Carolina. She only spends a day in school, but she has a natural gift for learning. And she learns a lot about life from observing the nature and the insects around her. She learns about deception from the fireflies. Uh, Kaya, like Mary Anning, is dismissed because of her lack of formal education and in Where the Crawdad Sings there's also a murder mystery. We start with the discovery of the body of Chase, who was a romantic interest of Kaya and she is immediately thought of as the primary suspect in the murder case, although there's a lack of evidence against her, but the town, small town's prejudice is against her. In Lyme Regis we see the small town's prejudice against Mary Anning because she's seen with various men helping them find fossils on the beach and small towns talk and gossip and malign single women who have connections with men even if they're perfectly innocent connections. And with the she selling of shells we also see Kaya in Where the Korodad Sings. Her initial way of getting money is selling the mussel she finds to Jumping, who lives in the coloured town with his wife Mabel, who are the only real friends she has in that area. Both books are historical novels, 
Remarkable Creatures is set at the beginning of the 19th century in Dorset and Where the Crawdad Sings is set in the 1950s and 1960s in North Carolina on the marshy coast of North Carolina. I gave both books four stars. They were both interesting reads. They captivated me with their story. I found Where the Crawdad Sings a bit unbelievable that uh, the child Kaya would have avoid, evaded the authorities for so long that she wouldn't have been dragged to school, that she wouldn't have come into the arms of the social services. And yes, and with Remarkable Creatures, I thought the pace was a bit slow at times, but they were both enjoyable reads and I'd recommend them. The two short stories I also would give four stars to, Blood Child by Octavia E. Butler and The Mark on the Wall by Virginia Woolf. Again, I enjoyed them. And but I give five stars to the sort of Kagan because I really loved that and I'd like to read that again and it was a fantastic book. And you can look at the, my review here. As to the stuff, I just got three cars this month. We're still on lockdown. This is a Matchbox Jeep Wrangler. It's a Jurassic World series, so maybe it can go exploring on Lime Regis beaches like Mary Anning did. And these two, there's an Audi R8 Spider and a Nissan 300ZX Turbo. I just got these in my local grocery store where I go to get food. I can't do much hunting for my fossils because of the lockdown. So that was my January wrap up. If you enjoyed it, you can like and subscribe below and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.